Hello my darlings, I hope you're doing very well. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a legal battle within the tattoo industry. This is quite an old situation, but I feel like with this, I feel like this is better talked about now rather than never, so better late than never. But a lot of you guys have uh, showed me a couple of articles to do this situation, which is Kat Von D is being sued over a tattoo she has done because she used a photographer's picture. So she took a photographer's picture and then tattooed it onto someone. And I guess with no permission kind of thing. So this has a lot of people that use photographs as reference, like wondering, oh my gosh, can this like happen to absolutely anyone? And it could, it really unfortunately could happen to anyone. Um, but most creative people won't really take action or whatever. You know, like, well, with most people that use, uh, like, other people's photographs, say it of, like, a famous person. I've got a good example, actually. So, I have one celebrity portrait tattoo. It's of a character from one of my favourite uh, TV shows, which is absolutely fabulous. I got the character Patsy Stone tattooed on me, and there was a reference photo used. I'll flag the tattoo and the reference photo up here. And as you can see, the artist that did it, who was Paula Castle, she kind of made it into her own. And it you can see that there was the references there, but it's completely, it's not like a photographic uh, tattoo. It's not realism or anything like that. But a lot of realistic tattoo artists will take a image from Google or whatever and use it as reference. And sometimes it ends up looking the exact same as the photo. And I'd say most of the time, it's not a big deal. It's not an issue. No one really cares. You know, there's not, I think this is maybe one of the only cases where this has happened. And I believe this has probably happened because Kat Von D is a huge figure. She's a celebrity. A lot of people know of who she is. Kind of one of those things where she's been made an example out of maybe. Um, but this could be something that, happens from now on like there's probably photographers out there scouring tattoo artists instagrams thinking oh can i cash in on this kind of thing so it's kind of like this could change the face of tattooing and references and copying which i've definitely as you guys know my stance on tattoo copying it's you know a huge issue and it's something that irates me to no end i absolutely hate it when a tattoo artist will copy another tattoo artist tattoo or a, a bit of flash which happens a lot i've seen a lot on my instagram where tattoo artists will say like i haven't even had the chance to tattoo this like i posted a bit of flash and then a tattoo artist has taken it and tattooed it on someone and i haven't even had the chance to do it and it's my own work it's kind of like where do we draw the line on this like what is good and what is bad and this kind of made me realize like oh my gosh like maybe using someone's photograph as a reference is just as bad as copying someone else's tattoo because it does take a lot of skill to take good photos oh gosh it's like a, quite a dilemma um but this kind of thing has happened before in which i don't know if you guys will remember but i managed to get this article up where tattoo artist sued warner brothers for using the tattoo he did on mike tyson onto one of the actors within the hangover 2 so i've got this article here we won't need to read into it too much they used it without the tattoo artist's permission he rightfully so because believe it or not tattoo artists actually own your tattoos <laughs> and uh, it's weird but they do it's their intellectual artistic property so so any tattoo artist that has tattooed me and i've showed my tattoos to you guys and i've like because i sometimes profit off of you know their artwork because when i make tattoo when i make videos about my tattoo experience um i'm obviously showing it off and i'm talking about it and it's their artwork and whatever they could yeah they could <laughs> they could have an issue with that and you know it's yeah they they own it so technically tattoo artists own your skin because <laughs> it is their artwork but again most in fact yeah i'd say most tattoo artists really don't have a problem with it because they're just like well it's your body you do what you want with it you've paid for a service go on about your business and do what you want kind of thing but a select few tattoo artists will be like wait i own that you're profiting off of it i'm gonna sue you and it, it works so this situation that happened in 2011 I'll just do a quick read of this. It says, fans of The Hangover Part 2 can breathe easier. The tattoo on Ed Helms' face is staying in the film. Oh, that's it, because they were going to cut it out because of 
Yeah. Warner Brothers has settled the lawsuit brought by Missouri tattoo artist S. Victor Whitmill over the mark on Helm's face, which Whitmill claimed infringed copyrighted tattoo he created for boxer Mike Tyson. Terms of the settlement were not disclosed when asked for a comment, Whitmill attorney Jeff Gerber provided THR the following statement. Warner Bros and Mr. Whitmill have amicably resolved the dispute. No other information will be provided. But yeah, I remember there was this whole lawsuit case over the whole thing and it's just like oh my god so that wasn't one that has stood out to me to kind of talk about within this video but we're gonna go on to the Kat Von D situation so there's this article here from DIY photography I thought I'd use a photography article to read instead of just any old one because you know they will know the ins and outs of photography obviously um, but we got a picture here of Kat Von D doing her thing We've seen different kinds of copyright infringement laws and here's a very unusual one. Photographer Jeff Sedick has filed a lawsuit against famous tattoo artist Kat Von D who used his photo of Miles Davis for a tattoo. The photographer seeking $150,000 in statutory damages plus any profits earned by depicting the tattoo and removing any directive derivative works she could have made from it. See that's what I was saying? Like, I, I could get in trouble. <laughs> Luckily, most tattoo artists are like, you know, you go on your way. <laughs> you do what you want with it. Kat Von D became famous after she was a star in TLC reality TV series LA Inc. No, it was Miami Inc. She became famous. <laughs> Running between 2007 and 2011. In March 2017, she used Jeff Sedick's photo of Miles Davis as a reference and tattooed it on her client's arm. She shared it multiple times with her 7.4 million followers on Instagram as well as on her Facebook page. You can also see the photo in the short clip on YouTube. Let's have a look see here. Let's turn the volume down. That's just... Okay, so yeah, this is what uh, realism tattoo artists will do. They will take the reference photo and then sort of trace over it. And you'll see that it will have like, they'll trace out areas where there's like a highlight and then the shadows. So yeah, there's definite proof there that she has used that photo for reference. There's no denying it. There's literal video evidence there. And here is a picture here of her use with the photo right there and then her doing the um, tattoo. Shh, don't tell anyone, but this is actually Kat Von D's first time doing a portrait of the incomparable Miles Davis. So far, so good, huh? What musician would you get? Which is what it was captioned. And this was by the tattoo studio that Kat Von D owns, which is called High Voltage. And it was posted four years ago. According to the lawsuit, Sedic, was it Sedlick? Sedlick, alleges that her Instagram photo depicts the final product of defendant Kat Von D's unauthorized and unlicensed reproduction and derivative work of the iconic Miles Davis portrait in the form of a tattoo. He also claims that a high voltage tattoo Instagram post from the 15th of April 2006 depicts a nearly exact duplication of the iconic Miles Davis portrait as reproduced by defendant Kat Von D. Sedlick took the photo of Miles Davis at his beach house in Malibu, California in 1989. The portrait has been sold with a non-exclusive license to reproduce, distribute and display ever since it was created. The first time it was published was shortly after its creation. It became part of a cover story in Jazz Is magazine around August 1989. This is the only photo Sedlick sells on his Satachi art account where he adds a bit of a backstory. Ooh. I prepared for this portrait session over a period of years, working through hundreds of concepts, creating dozens of sketches. Miles selected a number of my sketches, but this concept was his favorite. To make this photograph, I created a 20 by 20 tent in, a black, in black cloth on the patio behind his home. The image was made at noon in bright sun beneath a large sailcloth. Miles treated me with respect and I photographed him on many occasions in, the, in his later years. In addition to the backstory, Sedlick requires that his photos are not copied or used without contacting him for license first, nor new artwork should be made based on his photo. So he decided to, when he saw that Kat Von D did make art based on his photograph, According to Billboard, the photographer wants Kat Von D and his business High Voltage Tattoo to remove any content referencing his image from 
all print, web and social media platforms. He also seeks statutory damages of $150,000 per work depicting the tattoo, including derivative works such as advertising, marketing and promotional materials. But that's not all. Sedlik also requires any profits Kat Von G and her studio made by using the image, as well as any losses Sedlik has a consequence of that use. There are also any other monetary advantage gained, all other damages, including under copyright law, attorney fees and cost of the suit, and pre and post judgment interest. Oh boy, there's a lot to digest here. As someone that, you know, content creates kind of thing, I know you can't make any money off of Instagram. Like anytime you post, you don't get money for it. It's not like YouTube when you upload a video and there's ads on it, you get money. Like there's, you don't earn money from Instagram unless you do a sponsored post from it, like a third party kind of deal. So say if I was to advertise this deodorant. <laughs> I would get paid to advertise the deodorant, but Instagram doesn't pay kind of deal. So she wouldn't have made any money for posting the photo or anything. The only time she would have probably made money is from the client who got the tattoo. He would have, he or she would have paid for the tattoo. And I don't know Kat Von D's rates, but as she is a, ce a celebrity tattoo artist, normally they are pretty expensive. So you, I don't know, it could be anything of up to five thousand dollars maybe i don't know like it, that might sound like a stretch but you know i've seen micro tattoo artists charge a lot of money for something tiny so it could even be more than five thousand dollars oh my god however said Luke claims that he didn't file a lawsuit just like that in a statement he gave billboard he said that he reached out to cap one d artist to artist through her representatives seeking an amicable resolution of the matter however he claims that she chose to ignore his good faith effort to avoid litigation see so she could have maybe avoided this whole situation if she just talked to the photographer and kind of sorted out something. Honestly, I have no idea how this could turn out. I don't know how the law works with this kind of derivative work. I never even thought about it. I believe tattoos based on photos are considered to be derivative work, but then again, Kat Von D didn't earn money from the photo itself, but from drawing it on someone's skin. I must admit that I am confused and very curious to see how this ends. If you have any knowledge in the Oh, okay, that's just someone talking about it. Right, so this whole situation, the so Kat Von D didn't physically take the photo and put it on like a t-shirt or a poster or anything like that. So she didn't make money, like this article was saying, that she didn't take the actual photo and profit, it, profit off of it like that, like you putting it on a t-shirt or whatever, like something Forever 21 would do. They would take someone else's art, put it on a t-shirt and then make money from it. But she has still made money from it because, you know, with tattooing, you have to pay for the tattoo. So she did still make money. Yeah, with this whole situation, I am super torn because I'm someone that respects everyone's creativeness. It, should there be a line drawn here, like with a photograph? Like, is that too much of a stretch when it comes to tattoo copying and, you know, creating lawsuits and all of that? Or should photographers be treated with the same respect as we respect tattoo artists with this whole thing like should we start asking photographers for permission to use their photos as reference or is that just like a whole other thing how do you track down a photographer nowadays like if you go into google and type in i don't know like who should we use as an example let's use kat von d as an example so if we just type into google kat von d and we click on this image how do we find who took this photo? It just says Getty Images, which is a whole industry of photographers, right? They take photos and license them out and all of that. You'd have to contact Getty to get this image, to get permission to use it as a reference to create art. Like it's a whole process, but I totally understand why photo this photographer in question is kind of annoyed about the whole situation. But then it's kind of like, oh, is that like just a bit too much? Like, I don't know, I'm so torn with this. Normally I have a, a dead set opinion. I'm like, oh yeah, that's just stupid. But I, I kind of understand why he's mad and why he's taken that action. But then what does that mean for the tattoo industry and reference photos? Because when you do a portrait tattoo, you have to have a reference photo. You cannot create it from memory. It would end up looking like absolute garbage. And there are so many tattoo artists out there 
realism tattoo artists that do such an incredible job and it's like but where's the line drawn like can you take a reference photo but then like really mess it up uh, there's a couple of tattoo artists i can think of hang on so for example there's these tattoo artists that i really like called um, ryan matthew murray i've mentioned them before um, but they do sometimes do a celebrity portrait so this for example from a film called interview with a vampire you can see this is Brad Pitt, for example, but they've stylized it quite a bit. So yeah, it still looks like Brad Pitt, but for whatever reference photo they've used, it probably won't look the exact same because of how they stylized it. So does that make it okay to use a reference photo? But then does that mean realism tattoo artists that do, you know, very lifelike portrait tattoos? Are they screwed? Because they always end up looking like the photograph and they're always beautifully well done. Like, oh my God, like in my opinion, like this is okay because it won't look like the photo. <laughs> but then like, that means like a whole huge chunk of realism tattoo artists that are like out of their job. Like, how, how do we, how? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so confusing. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this because you guys might be able to help me understand this a bit more and make it make sense a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because again, I've always been that person that, you know, stands by creative people and believe that when they create something, you know, it's theirs and you shouldn't copy it or take stuff without permission and stuff. But I've never really thought about realism tattoo artists who copy someone's photo exactly there's no there's no changes normally unless it's in a different style like this black work or neo traditional or traditional or whatever as i was saying i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on this and i hope you're all well and until my next video bye <laughs>